All right, cool. Hey, what up, podcast people? This is Matt Kelderman. I am the CEO of Herd Group DFW. Um, I'm here with Nick Good, the leader of the Good Home Team, and Brian Force, the warrior leader of the Brian Force Real Estate Realty. Real I like team. that. And we're gonna. I know. You're gonna change that. Put that on your. I like business how it's different every time you guys. Warrior yeah. leader. Yeah, a pair of boxing I mean, he always comes up. Him and Steven always good at the intros. I <laughs> suck at that. <laughs> I need someone just to follow me around with intros. Right? That, well, it, pretty much, I need somebody to follow me around every single day of my life, just help me out with pretty much everything. Yeah. So I would take yeah. that. So it's like Big Daddy, though. I wipe my own ass. That's, <laughs> that's how. I, I don't need help with that yet. I told Jennifer. I said, as a guy who's six three and like two twenty, it yeah. would just be one. It would be awesome to be Little Spoon every once in a while. Oh, I'm and little. Two, yeah, I'm Little all, Spoon every time. I want. I want a twenty fit person <laughs> to carry me around like a tiny baby. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I just want a giant person just to carry me around, so I can see what it feel like as a grown person to just be cradled. By Barry you. would let you do that. Barry. Very short shorts would absolutely <laughs> allow that to happen. It would allow it to and happen. if if you don't know what we're talking about about Barry, just email Matt. Yeah. at the hergroup.com. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Matt Kellerman at hergroup.com. What is Barry? If I had one person follow me I'll around, send you a link. it would just be a person with like a say anything style boombox, but they just play ring music everywhere uh, yes. I go. Yes. Every entrance to every room. Yes. I don't I know mean, what we my can song make would that be happen. At. It'd be Enter Sandman everywhere that I go. I want like the uh, rap concert hype man with the towel and the water <laughs> bottle. I want that dude following me. Yes, right? yes. That's my guy. How much do you think that guy makes? Oh, I, I don't care. I'm paying him. Uh. <laughs> in 1993, probably not that much. But like nowadays, like I don't know. I feel like he could increase my business probably to $250,000 in GCI. So I'd pay him 100 of that. All right. right. Like He'd have me so pumped all the time, I would never lose. Yeah. All right. 100%. Where, where do we apply for that job? <laughs> I don't have any idea. On top it's of per, applying it's for... Perform, it's yeah. performance-based pay. Right. I'm going to have to... The business first, then the pay for the hype man. So, <laughs> what are we talking about today? Uh, yeah. Speaking of people that we need to help us out, we are... Are, uh, all in the process of growing teams so which I'm finding out in my experience is a whole big bunch of people helping people and yeah. having the right people to come onto the team and um, it's all about the people right it, I mean it, the people management part of it is is probably from a leadership standpoint the thing that I work on on a daily basis more than anything else right so you know I want to talk to you specifically being a little bit longer and then Brian and I being in, kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. where, where he's currently entrenched and some of the things that you've broken through, or maybe there's just some truths that never go away, right? I, I mean, it's, there's no, I wish there was a secret, right? I mean, right. here's the thing. Um, I'm a high D personality, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, what I believe in, in my business is that everybody should join it mm -hmm. because they should feel lucky, which is not the right mindset. I'm not saying that that's how people should think, but um, I mean, I've lost some recruits to you, Matt. Yeah. And, and you want to talk about what pisses me off more than anything <laughs> is losing recruits to, yeah. to other teams. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're an amazing guy. And, and I love you. But at the same time, when, when I hear, all right, I'm going to the Kelderman, I'm going to Herg's Kelderman group. I'm like, dude. What the hell? The guy's brand new. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I said it. I said it. And I Absolutely. said, look, and I said, look uh, Kelderman's one of my great friends. But at the same time, like, we have a proven path here. Yes. Why didn't we make that connection? It's almost right. like you go on a date and then you thought the connection was there. And you're like, all right, I'm going to give you a rose. Yeah. But then they don't accept it, or they don't ever call you back, or they never text you, and I'm like, that hurts. It's worse when they call first, and then yes. they reject your rose after Exactly. That. They're like, hey, I really want to talk to you about joining your team, and then they come back and like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go with this team. Yes. And, like, oh. and, and, it's, and it's frustrating. <laughs> so so with that, I mean, it's I mean, we just brought on five people, yeah. right? And, and we're in July right now, so uh, we just brought on five. We're getting out of business tomorrow with one. He mm -hmm. sent me, you know, I got a text message saying, hey, let's talk. And I know what that talk is. It's they're getting <laughs> out of business with us, and that's right. okay. So it's it's the becoming a leader and building a team it's getting used to or being okay with people not accepting your team yeah or seeing the value in your team even though it it, it doesn't feel good when they when they reject it right i mean yeah. you know i put my blood sweat and tears just like you guys have as well mm -hmm. and when they say no to it you're like oh, you're making a wrong decision even though you mm -hmm. went to a great group you're yeah. making a wrong decision yeah right i mean how do y'all feel i i think i think there's so many people different they're, they're just better for different teams too, right? So like like you and I, the way we approach it and the way our teams are set up aren't the same at all either. Right. Right. Some of the guys that you have flourishing would be on my team and be like, what? Like, we're bored as hell in here, right? Yeah. Because you guys are, <laughs> I will admit, like way more high intensity than we are. So like for you guys, especially you've got two dudes who have bought all into what yeah. you did and you were rocking it by yourself before. So like, what's that looking like for you so far? Well, I think that it's, it's dealing with a lot of the same issues in different ways. Like when, when I was like in my infancy as my career, mm -hmm. like we all were like, when I got beat out for a listing, it was the biggest deal in the world to me. Like right. it is now too. I hate fucking losing. Not yeah. More so now because I fundamentally believe there are very few people in this industry 
that would yes. be better suited to list any house than I mean I just believe and we in all what should we feel do, that right? way right I believe, and yeah. so now it's sort of the same way when you're growing a team right you have that same feeling of like where you used to just feel like every listing you lost just made or broke you. Mm -hmm. When you're growing a team, you feel like every person who isn't a match or it doesn't work out with is a reflection of you and your team and your business. And it's sort of like, that's, that's a mental shift that I need to make yeah. that, you know, I know the statistics, especially being in leadership for a long time. I've seen so many people come and go just in this industry in general. I understand that you need to trust the process, right? And not let your business be defined by every single person that comes to the door and it doesn't work out for, right? Mm -hmm. Because the bleak statistics are, it doesn't work out for 80% of people in this industry, period, within yeah. five years. You know what I mean? And so- It's like 90 something in the first two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. huge, Insanity. right? Yeah, and it's so, a crazy low number. Like the biggest thing for me is getting that Getting that buy-in the same way that whenever we were first in the few years of our career, we had to sort of get from ourselves, right? Like my biggest struggle right now with my new team members, and not struggle, my biggest opportunity with them is for them to see how doing a lot of the little things right over and over and mm -hmm. over and creating good habits affects their bottom line down the road more than anything that I could do for them up front, right? Just the little simple shit, like when I see that people are stuck in our system that haven't been followed up with, right? Yeah. Even though it's somebody that we've left 15 voicemails for and have never gotten a hold of, if there was a task to set a voicemail and it didn't happen, yeah. like I go berserk, you know what I mean? And because I understand, right? That, you understand that, the power of that follow Right, that, that newer agent might not understand that like, oh, it's just another voicemail, like they're not going to pick up anyway. Like, for me, that's just the same story I've seen on a hundred transactions that I've closed where I've been calling them for a year. Yeah. And one day they call me back and I sell my house two days later. And so you that's know based I mean? on your previous experience. And that's right. something, you know, even I have to take a step backwards on and, and Elizabeth who runs my team as well is that we've all had that experience. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the win is when someone from a year and a half you call, then you've been following up, following up, following up. And they're like, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't call you. I just been real busy right. for a year and a half. You've yeah. been that busy. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> but they call you and then you come out and, and mm -hmm. you, you sign the listing. They don't have that experience yet. Right. And no matter how much we can tell them, it's kind of like a parent of saying, don't do that. It's hot. Right. The stove's hot. If you, if you touch that, it's going to burn Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Right. And, and so they stick their hand on it. What does it do? It burns their damn hand. Right. And so they eventually have to feel those wins. Um, and, and I was trying to make a point to this about team building. I just lost it. So we'll circle around where I was trying to go because building a team is, is difficult, right? Yeah. It's not for everyone. And, and joining, maybe joining a team is the best way. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure that we would all agree uh, that the team concept is really the new brokerage. Yeah. And the brokerage is there to support, support teams, teams right. because yeah. that's the way it's going. Pay I mean, for insurance. I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, completely. And, and the other thing, too, with that, I mean, you know, this will peel the curtain back a little bit on conversations that have happened way off camera a year ago. But at one point before I decided to do her group, you know, Nick and I were in pretty serious talks, right? Because of the exact thing I was experiencing as an individual agent. <clears throat> it was very expensive. I absolutely had no clue what I was doing from a business standpoint. Nick referred to himself being a high D earlier. I'm a crazy high I. Right, like I was a bartender for 15 years before right. this. My business building acumen is less than zero, <laughs> right? So like I, I, that wasn't something that I had the ability to do. So I was looking to offset the costs, the fear, you know, looking for all the stuff agents are looking for, leads, leadership, accountability, coaching, script practice, role play, all that stuff. You know, and my path turned a little bit differently because an opportunity that ended up at the right time. Yeah. But for even agents doing $11 million, they may look super sexy on paper and they're not super profitable. No. And that's the number nobody in real estate talks about is profitability, right? Yeah. We're talking about our GCI, but nobody's talking about what Which they're Which I think really you making. were there for that this morning, uh, Brian, for mm -hmm. uh, the Good to Great Mastermind. And and I, I had a, um, a slide of our Austin, uh, Austin, my business partner, who's my brother. Um, we had our Disney map, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And this is something we drew out, I think, five, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And everything that had, it had the good home team, it had our ancillary businesses like a mortgage company, insurance mm -hmm. company, our investments, but all the lines that were leading to one another all had profitability mm -hmm. written around them, right? And so we're big on focus on profitability where, you know, Keller Williams and the other brokerages, what do they reward on? GCI. Production. Yep. That's and it. production. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, how much did you spend to get there? Because yeah. I know people, you know, we talked about this on the last podcast of, I mean, we're the number one listing agent, listing agent team in Keller Williams, Keller Williams, Dallas Preston Road office. And we were beating out another group that's no longer with us, but they spend thousands. It's ridiculous how much yeah. they spend mm -hmm. on marketing and advertising. And I'm like, there's no way you want to talk about a sleepless night. I don't want to have to worry about my marketing dollars that I'm on the brink of failure if I don't hit a certain number right. that month because, you know, I just stroked a check for 50 grand. And you can't back off of the marketing. 
right? No. Like you can't, you can't reel it back in. Once that, once it starts going out, it has to continue. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what, at what point, why do you want to build a team? So right. let's, let's talk about that. Like a lot of these people think they want to build a team. Um, and, and teams, a lot of teams are selfish. Well, one of the things that I learned, like, and I'm obviously not nearly as far into the process as, as even the two other people sitting here, but something I learned really, really quickly is if you, the only reason to build a team, right, is if you physically cannot, when you hit a ceiling and, and, play, mm -hmm. and this is something that I've heard, it's right, it's in the book, it's in every book you read, right? Don't build a team out of out of want or desire build it out of necessity absolutely right? when you are generating more business than you can physically handle at any given time that's when you take on you know that's when you grow hire your first assistant then obviously leverage other agents things like that but i didn't and i did it the right way and i think it wasn't until i really started building my team that i realized why that is yeah. because when you are managing people it comes with a whole other subset of problems and challenges oh, and obstacles to face every day that if you're adding the fact that you don't have enough business to go around yeah. on top of that, you're, you're assured failure, right? Absolutely. So if you're going to start a team, make sure that whenever the challenges arise, at the only challenges that you need to face are the ones that are centered around replicating yourself, right? To continue to grow your business because there's too much of it to go around right yep. now. And you need somebody that you can train to do things just the way that you're doing. So you can still serve your clients. Because if you're trying to build a team to, to, to make more business, to generate more business, you'll fail almost immediately. Absolutely. Because it's going to be, and I'll, I, I like to ask you guys this question whenever we're kind of next topic is, what I, one of the things I didn't realize is how expensive it is to bring just people onto your team in general. Yeah. What, how much your overhead goes up just having people exist in your world, right? So it reaches a point. So I, I agree and disagree with that. I mean, depending on what you, what you add. Like, right. I mean, to me, bringing in bodies will do one of two things. Like, I have a controlled fixed cost on, you know, my Commissions Inc. lets me have an unlimited amount of users yeah, with right. no additional cost. Boomtown is the same, same way. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you use, Brian? We use Brivity. Brivity. It's not the same way, but not well, the same. I, at a certain tipping point. At a certain right. tipping point i bet it is so yeah, you know the only increased cost that if, if a new person joins the good home team is that we pay for a mojo dialer account mm -hmm. and they don't give us a discount on right. bulk which is ridiculous so yeah. mojo yeah. if you're if we can get this out there they need yeah. to offer you got three a, high paying they need to, hashtag yeah. mojo yeah. hashtag <laughs> mojo all the way they need to have a team they need to ha offer some type of discount Absolutely. maybe they don't have to just because they're, the they're yeah let's sponsor this i would love to i mean you're sponsoring colton Lindsay. um <laughs> so you know that's the only true added expense other than if you have a if you have a non-producer in your environment right it affects your team yes. a lot more that's that to me is more costly than anything and that's something i've had to learn right elizabeth who runs my team and i keep referring to her i mean she's in the grind day in day out she's the one telling me this i'm like no that's not true let's just bring on anybody that has a pulse right we yep. talked about this <laughs> we, we used this term a few a few weeks ago if you have a pulse just join our team right. and and you know we we had a crazy dude who just didn't work out and it just ruined our culture yeah and that has a negative impact on on production so that's what the cost is right, right. it's yep. that it's that potential impact on all right you know your team wants to be with the best right yeah. and they see that you're bringing shit in that opportunity cost absolutely huge. yeah the opportunity cost is huge and i think the time suck for you as a leader too right like and and from again back to my high eye i get disappointed right you didn't pick me so mm -hmm. there's there's this there's this whole time cost actually i have i have the horror story of the guy brought on very very first day right Just poured into him poured into him gave him a listing right tried to get something going you know didn't work out, yeah. you know, kind of unceremoniously. So, you know, we have horror stories for days, right? And I'm sure each one of us has a different idea of the criteria that we're looking for when we're sitting down for somebody. And, and I, I'd be happy to share mine and then kick it back to you guys. So, you know, for me, the, the right agent for, for her group DFW is they're a responsive person. If you ask me anything on the KPA that I care about, responsiveness, yeah. right? I want a high responsiveness score. I'm looking for somebody who has some kind of emotional intellect. Right. right? The, the business is up and down. It's all over the place. Right. And then I need somebody who's willing to work hard. You have to be willing to work hard. You know, if, if I could pick, you know, B and C, it would be have four months worth of money and have a spouse who's right. also on board. So <laughs> right? let's, let's talk right. about that. Right. So right. like, let's r remember my question is, you know, people joining a team, how do we get to them before they're out of money and joining Absolutely. us broke? Right. And then they give us two weeks and then they're gone. So yep. let's, let's, let's circle back to that. Cause you know, looking for a team member is very similar. I mean, you know, you know, Brian over here, you know, I think he was a decent boxer, right? I mean, did you win a few? I, was, I got one every once in a while. And that's all that matters. Punched a guy but in you, the face. But you got back up, right? right. If, if I were to knock you out right now, which chances are I couldn't because you're a boxer and I'm not. <laughs> um, but 
you would probably get back up. Right. And what is that? That's grit, right? So what we look for, the number one thing we look for in someone is grit. And it's hard to look for that. So yeah. I always say, like, I always ask a question, I mean, most of these people don't get it these days, is, you know, we're asking you to fight Mike Tyson every mm -hmm. freaking day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to beat Mike Tyson. Even today, if Mike was in this room, he would still kick all of our asses. Yes, he would knock right? all of us out. But I would get, the, I would get up. Yeah. And I would ask for more and ask for more. Either I'm really smart and determined or I'm just an idiot. Right. And it's probably the latter, right? <laughs> I'm probably really an idiot, but I'm just I'm just dumb enough to keep getting back yep. up. And that's what the real estate business is. I mean, one minute, you know, I could ask you guys, how's business? You're like, it's freaking awesome. I, you know, I sold 5 million, 150,000 <laughs> in commissions. The next month you're like, holy shit, I'm going out of business. Right. <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, dude, or absolutely. that could be the next day. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how, how do we find grit? I mean, I don't, I'm still struggling, like one out of 10. I mean, my guys, the guys that are with me today that are still there have it. Absolutely. And we talk about it every day. I think it's, it's you have to throw them into the fire. It goes back to the pulse thing. Like there, there, I think there are probably some indicators up front where you can weed a few people out. But if I kind of think you might be able to do it, I'm probably going to let you come in and try, right. you know, and you know, we'll talk about this in a minute too, but we have some pretty aggressive 30 day standards that don't, you know, we're not really friends for the first 90 days. You got to right. come in and earn it a little bit. Yep. So, um, I think my, my thing is, is I think, I mean, obviously if you don't upgrade, you're not going to survive regardless. Right. For sure. Part of, I feel like my opportunity, my job description as a leader is I have to convey the right story to people. Cause here's mm -hmm. the thing. You can have all the grit and, and hard work and diligence and, and, and just work ethic in the world, but if you don't believe in what you're doing, like I'm not dumb enough to do something over and over and over if I know it's not working, yeah. right? But here's the thing. We're all in the position that we're in in real estate, which is in the top, you know, five to one tenth of one percent, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, <laughs> nation or worldwide mm -hmm. for a reason, right? And that's because we trusted a specific process over time that at a lot of times in the past didn't really seem like it was going to work out. Yep. Right. But we kept, we kept pushing forward and a lot of it was just on blind faith or because we had models or role models or whatever. And here's the thing, that's part of my opportunity as a leader is when you come on, all I'm looking for is hard work and coachability. Yep. Right. Cause here's the thing that initial hard work. If I'm not coaching you to understand that you just have to trust the process, that every failure is leading to something, mm -hmm. you'll stop believing it at some point, no matter how hardworking you are. And it's not because you're lazy, it's because you'll, you'll feel like your efforts aren't in the right place. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with a lot of realtors that we say, you know, oh, they work hard, they bust their ass, and then they're out of the business two years yep. later. It's because they worked hard and they bust their ass, but they just, they had no model, no, no reason to trust that it was going anywhere. So they decided to go work really hard on something else. And I think that's part of our opportunity as leaders is to go, is to set the example that everything that you're doing every day is leading somewhere and provide that. So that's why I try, I mean, I'm still heavily in production. Absolutely. Me every too. time I take a listing, every time I do anything, I try to convey that story because I, I rarely, unless lightning strikes and I just nail an expired and go get it that day, mm -hmm. I rarely take a listing that I haven't been, been nurturing for at least three or four months, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's over a year. Yeah. And so I try to convey that story every time I do a deal. Like, this is how it works. You guys got to understand every... Every task that you ignore and don't follow up with, you're hurting the story, right? Well, it's you're, just a potential it's a potential loss in business. You don't know where right. anybody's to come. I mean, that's why you respond to the thirty thousand dollar leads. Trust that all the shit that you feel like isn't doing anything that is. day is doing something ninety days from now. Right? Absolutely, that, and, and that's what we talk. I mean, in my trainings, my weekly, my daily trainings we have with our yeah. team, right? Actually, Mondays and Wednesdays now. But um, it's guys, trust me. In ninety days. If you put in the hard work, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you're going to feel some sort of results. It's buying. It's not 100% right? that you're going to get business. But here's the thing. We're in July right now. So 90 days puts us in what? September, mm -hmm. October? Mm -hmm. Fourth quarter, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you're going to be begging to want to go back in time. In October. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be wanting to go back in time, wishing I wish I yeah. would have listened to Nick. Right. And I wish I would have made my calls. I wish I would follow up with, with Matt because he said to, and I just put him off. Yeah. I mean, I have one person right now, and I'm not perfect, I have one person right now I'm two weeks behind on follow-up on. Yeah. Yeah. And I met with a damn person. Really? Yeah, yeah and it, so we're not perfect at it, and that's no. the thing. The problem is where, where I see where agents fail, and, and, and these are even some that get a taste of success, is that they beat themselves up. Yep. I mean, we all 
can sit here and I'm sure can admit you're not 100% perfect on your follow-up. Even no. though you have the systems in there, uh, you know, it, it, we can still get behind on it and you can probably name that person that you're behind on and you're yeah. like, you're going to get pissed when they list with someone else, mm -hmm. but the, it's your fault. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. I mean, I'm still a slave to the shiny toys and stuff that I get. I mean, I'm, I'm like a, a self-proclaimed nerd when it comes to like new marketing strategies. Yep. I'm still the first one to admit that there are plenty of times where my task list just has all blinking red follow up yeah, and yeah. I'm still looking at the best way to optimize my Facebook ads and shit like, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm not perfect at all by any means. But you, but you but, grind through it and, exactly. that, and that's what makes the difference. Absolutely. I mean, and, and that gets to a point where, you know, where we circle around to the question I had or that I remembered finally was how do we get these guys, because joining a team, a lot of times they feel like that's, you know, that's their last resort. Absolutely. Right. That's, they're like, all right, I'm going to try this on my own first. Mm -hmm. And if I don't make it, then I'm going to come join your team. Yeah. And that's, and I'm almost at a point where I'm like, no, I don't want that. Yeah. Because here's the thing: that means you couldn't make it on your own. Why would I take someone who's failed? Right. 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 There's a, there's a little bit of flavor in that too, though, right? Like like being, like okay, I've done it for a little bit now. I do know it's expensive. I do know it's hard. You know what? You know what's really the ideal agent for a team? The agent who's been licensed for 18 months, who's doing about a million and a half to three million dollars in production, and can't figure out a way to turn those 12 to 15 to 17 deals right. into 25, 35, 45. Those are the agents who need to join a team, right? Like if you're like I was before I had the team, I closed 17 deals a year, you know, not really putting any money back into marketing, constantly having to find new business, which is its own exhausting yeah. prospect in the first place, right? You eventually get to a point where, oh yeah, on paper, oh, you made 190 a year. Mm -hmm. That ain't what went in the pocket. No, no, not, and not even like close, 70. right? <laughs> yeah. And I think there's a little bit of that punch in the mouth that makes you really receptive being on a team. Right. There's other issues that come along with it too, but I've found that through training at our market center, and then obviously networking with other agents at other brokerages, finding people early on and just telling them, you can't reach everybody, right? But join a team before you, you took all this time to get licensed. You yeah. took all this time to, why would you leave the industry without speaking to teams? It's just ridiculous. Well, and my, my thought process behind it is, if you're not willing to maybe drive Uber, get a wait tables right. in the afternoon. I mean, I've got a guy on my team, David, who is now killing it, right? David is, David David is, is awesome, a beast. Man. He's and here's awesome. the thing, we almost fired David. David was in the business for seven months at another KW brokerage, did zero deals, really? and brought him on. Um, he was a referral from another agent, brought him on, didn't kill it. Right. We had a talk with him and I said, look, David, you know, actually Elizabeth did, so not me. Yeah. But Elizabeth's like, look, you're, you're about to be out of here. Mm -hmm. He's like, what do I do? And she's like, well, that question says it all, though, What do dude? I do, right? He wanted to know what to do. He wanted but to fix it. here's the thing. It took him to the point of, of us almost firing him. Of course. Because we were teaching everything. I said, right. We're already teaching you. Just implement. That's all it is. Implement. So he started implementing, started taking listings and and buyer deals, et cetera. And he's on that right path. But during that time, he was he was serving tables. He mm -hmm. sold this car and got a cheaper car. That is that's a, legit. That that's, is someone who's yes. going to make it. Yes. 100%. Where I have other people who are like, oh, I don't have any money, um, but I don't want to go get another job. I'm also going to cut out at one thirty. Yeah, right. I'm cutting out at eleven. Yeah. When you're really supposed to be with us till twelve, and it's like, dude. Yeah. You're not going to make it, right? So my you know, my quick aha moment was, and I shared this today at the Mastermind, is you know, in 2008, I had eight deals under contract in one month. If you were to ask me, man, I was, the, you, you, I was Superman. You could mm -hmm. shoot me, and it was going to bounce off. Yeah. <laughs> All eight of those deals fell out. <laughs> All eight. <laughs> oh for eight, That's right? Unreal. And I had no money. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and so I started looking for jobs and going on interviews, and I got a job offer with an, a foreclosure company. They're gonna pay me 60 or $65,000. They wanted me to work Monday through Saturday and highly suggested I work seven days a week if I wanna hit bonus. And I took a step backwards and I said, basically looking, going and looking for a job, interviewing and getting hired, it's the same thing we do with prospecting. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm looking. I'm calling expires. I'm calling for sale buyers. Those are those are you know uh, employers that are raising their hand saying, "Hey, I'm looking for someone to come work with mm -hmm. me." All right, so if I call enough of them Monday through Sunday and treat it like a full time job, like this sixty thousand dollar a year company was going to pay me, and clear way more than that, I'm going to make more. Absolutely. And for some reason, it doesn't compute with agents. They're like, "I'm just going to go to get a job." It's because of Chip and Joanna Gaines and the Property Brothers, and it all looks really easy, yeah. and they flash Frederick's commission up on the screen. Oh, Frederick's getting paid $410,000. No, he ain't. It's got to go to closing. There's inspections. There's all kinds of shit that has to happen, right? So, like, I think I feel like there's a duality to that, and that's what... And so, And I talk to my team about this all the time. It's, like it's, it's fundamentally mesmerizing to me how the real estate industry operates in the sense that... like What the failure rate is, mm -hmm. because... 
I mean, I'll give you an example. Like I used to know, uh, uh, I used to date a girl a long time ago. What? Right? I know. That was before I came out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and she, she worked at like a, uh, it was like an insurance lead aggregate, basically, mm-hmm. right? What they did is they cold called people all day, old people. They cold called old people whose insurance plans were expiring and tried to get a doctor to come out to see them so they could offer them like new insurance plans. Like job. the worst cold calling job <laughs> you could do, right? Yeah, that's terrible. It was like 30 base. And then if their whole division or whatever hit their you know, hit their goals or whatever. It was like bonuses up to like 45. Like you were guaranteed to never make more than $45,000 cold calling from eight to five Monday through Friday. And not even like, I mean, not even ever the chance of a pleasant conversation. Really. Absolutely. Like not. no one was ever excited to agree to any of this stuff. <laughs> right. But I mean, I knew people that worked at that place for years and it's because the 45 if you, as long as you hit your goals, was guaranteed, right? Yeah. And people pretty much always hit their goals because they had a boss that said they had to be there at eight every day yeah. and had to leave at five every day. And, for, and if 45 they didn't, they got, is like, okay, but... I mean, yeah. here's the thing. If I'll tell you this. 45 is fine. If that's, if that's what you... You're retired you know, on 45 you know, grand a year. Yeah, but if, like, that's, if, that's, if that's what you, serves sorry, your life, then not, great. Right? You know, like, I mean, and if that's, that's your standard, then that's fine. But what I will tell you is if, if you came in and you did that in real estate and you spent that amount of time prospecting and you only made 45, you probably don't speak English. Yeah, like you're, there's, you're, you're there's not, almost you're, no way you can do that exactly. little with the same amount of effort. And that's what's like fundamentally mesmerizing to me is the corporate world is harder than this. Yeah. Like real estate, and this is what I try to convey to my team all the time. It's binary. Everybody here that's built a team, we've built it on mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. We've already figured out what you need to do and what you don't need to do. It's one of two things. You either come in and you just do exactly what you're supposed to do every day, or you don't do exactly what you're supposed to do every day. And if you just do the things you're supposed to do every day, and it's not solving riddles, it's not joining Mensa, right? (laughs) It's not building rockets. If you just do the little shit you're supposed to do every day, like I said, it's binary. You will be successful. It's a high failure rate, right? Right. And that's the problem. That's where the grit thing that he comes in. You know, the conversion rate on some of the stuff that we're talking about is 4%. You know what, you know what a 96% failure rate feels like? A hundred percent failure. Oh, for sure. Like it feels like you're failing all the time and you're not willing to push through that part of it. You're just going to find it, have a hard time. At 4% success rate though, will pay you six figures. Oh, it's absolutely. I I use this example all the time. Absolutely. So, I mean, that would, that's like I was teaching the class a couple months ago and I said, Hey, if I were to pay you $10 for every phone call you made right now, how many phone calls would you make? She's like, as many as I need to, right? Yeah. I mean, prospecting, the calls we're making, it's paying more than $10 per mm-hmm. call. Yeah. So what? we'll make 1,500 calls. Exactly. You make 1,500 right? calls, you find some business. Yeah. yeah. Well, I <laughs> use the same, pretty much the same example. We talk about generating, because we basically we have our, our appointments you got to hit every week. And if you don't do it through prospecting your team leads, you got to find another way, right? So I, I use this example all the time, right? Just imagine you set up 20 FISBO appointments a month, right? Yeah. Basically, 20 FISBOs where you're going to go talk to people and preview their house and then take the tour. And then afterwards, you're going to say, hey, you know, I'd love to sit down with you if it doesn't work out in the next week. Let me follow up with you. You know, if you're considering hiring an agent, I'd love to be the first one to interview with, right? Yeah. You do that 20 times, right? You do that 20 times and... 10% of the time it works out, right? So yeah. 10% of the time you get an appointment, an actual listing appointment, right? So 86% of FISBOs end up listing with an agent, yeah. right? So eight out of 10 times or about nine out of 10 times they're going to list with an agent anyway. Let's just say it's the opposite. We reverse it. Let's just say nine out of 10 times they don't give you an appointment, right? So you do 20 a month. So you get two appointments a month, which is basically you already suck 90% of the time at your mm-hmm. job, right? Then out of that, you get an appointment and you only convert it half the time. So you suck half the other time that you get an appointment. Well, if you do that 20 times a month, you're going to take a listing every single month. You take yeah. a listing every single month, it's going to lead to at least one closed buyer every month. You'll do 24 deals a year and you'll fail 90% of the time, 95% of the time, I'm sorry. You could have a 95% failure rate, just be horrible at your job. And as long as you're doing the activities day in and day out consistently, you'll still make six figures. You'll still be one of the top 8% of wage earners in the entire country, yeah. depending on which metric you want. And you can be yeah. terrible at your job. Yeah. You're just doing it every day. And I think, I mean, I used to have an old kitchen. I was a bartender guy. I used to have an old kitchen manager. So the most important thing about having a job, Kelderman, is showing up. (laughs) That was his whole thing. (laughs) And it made sense, right? It made made sense. It does. Just show up. No, but going back, that's true. We talked about, you know, expectations, things like that. The thing is, yeah, I mean, I come from the same world that Matt does. I mean, when I got in this business for the first eight months, I was still bartending four days a week. Mm -hmm. I would get home at 4.30 in the morning. I'd be up at 8.00 
to go knock doors, right? I've never asked anybody. I think this is really crucial. If you're trying to build a team to get out of the things that you don't want to do, don't ever ask anybody on the team anything to do anything that you haven't that you already done do. for a really, really long That's time. That's a restaurant lesson right because there. Because yeah. <laughs> the genuineness, the, the authenticity yeah. in which you set your expectations will not resonate with people, right? Yeah. People know that when I ask them to go door knock or something like that, that I've come home crying more days than they've knocked single doors knocked already, single doors, right? Man. Like I've I've been there and I wear it all over. You and, know? and that sounds great. And let me but how here's the thing. And and I appreciate that comment mm-hmm. and, and sympathizing with them, but you also the realistic from the business mindset is you can't hold someone accountable for door knocking if you've never done it. Because if they're let's say that they go knock a hundred doors and they get nobody and or they get one, let's say one right. hypothetically, you might think that's amazing when realistically it's they should be knocking for every twenty doors they yeah. get one business. So you can't hold someone truly accountable if you've never done it yourself. Well, so and here's the thing, this might be something that needs to shift as my business starts to grow and I get a little bit less uh, more leveraged on my time is that I still do that shit for the first night. With your first 90 days that you come through with me, I do everything with you. I was outdoor knocking expireds two days ago with my team. I was taking them one by one. I had three of them in the car, and at every door we had stopped, I took one of them with me. See, and that's what and you I was get, up man. there, and that's and so I mean, I'm not only will I never ask you to do anything that I don't do, I won't ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do with you right now. Yeah. And as my team grows, I'm not gonna have the time to do that, and so that's gonna be one of my opportunities to grow in the future. But that's how I've gotten such buy-in from the people that I've brought on board is I'm still fucking doing it with you, right? And that's what you have to lean on. And I think that, I think that the experience is what all of us have to lean on in doing this too. So super awesome content, guys. Um, appreciate everybody stopping by. Brian Force, Nick Good, Matt thank Kelderman. Um, our information is probably going to be plastered all over the screen. We invite you to subscribe to this if you like the content. Leave us your comments on what we can do next. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>